So we're going to make this slinger. As you can see, it's quite simple. It's just straight at the waist. We're going to have a side seam and a zip. And in a few easy steps, I'll show you how I put this together. Choose really wisely with your fabric because it can just make or break your outfit. It can make it really simple or you can really lift it. And I'm just using some colours to bring out some of my design. So let's start. Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to learn how to make a lingo when the width of your fabric isn't so wide. Previously we've made a lingo where the width of the fabric was 55 inches, which is superb because it means you can get the length of the lingo all in one piece. But what do you do when the fabric you have has got a standard width of around 40, 42 inches, or maybe even less? There's still a way of making it so not to fear. What you need to do is just add in what we call a quarter piece. So I'll show you how we're going to do that today. What you're going to need is your fabric. I've chosen a brocade. It's quite stiff. There's lots of colours in it. There's metallic thread running through it as well, which also makes it thick. But can you see on the wrong side of this fabric, how many threads there are? So this is what's making the fabric so thick. It's lovely because it means you can have a nice board, quite stiff, keeping it in position. Not the floaty type. If your fabric is the floaty type, it doesn't matter. This pattern is going to work for all types of fabric. Also, what I've got is some lining fabric. Now, you saw the wrong side of this, and you do not want to catch anything. You want to make sure this is all completely covered. What I'm using is some fabric that I actually chose um, to make an outfit out of, but when I hadn't used it for so long, it, I found that it started to fade. So this is where the fabric has faded and I won't be able to use the fabric, not only because this is here and there's a couple of other patches too, but because once you've made it and you've put all that effort into it, if you know the quality of the fabric isn't that good, you don't want to put your effort into it. So I'm going to use this for lining purposes. It's quite a nice, um, strong fabric. It's a uh, imitation silk and it's got a nice two-tone to it. So it's a bit of a shame that um, the quality wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, but we've still got another use for it and we haven't wasted the fabric completely. So this will be the lining. Also, what we're going to be using is matching thread. And the base of this fabric is actually navy blue. You're also going to need a zip. I'm using an invisible zip again because that gives it a really nice finish. There's a thin 3.5 millimeter ones and scissors, sewing machine, and off you go. So we've made a lingo which falls straight to the ground, doesn't need any extra pieces in it. You'll be pleased to know this is just an extra step and it won't take too long. So what we're gonna do is in the same way, we're gonna fold our fabric in half. You're going to need two measurements to make this linger. Your waist size and the length you want to keep it. The waist that I need to keep this linger is 32 inches and the length is 40. So what I'm going to start by measuring out is how much fabric I've got exactly. And I've got 48 inches going this way, which is doubled. And just to make sure of my width, the width is edge to edge is 43 and a half. I do recommend you measure the length on both ends just in case there's any issue with the fabric, whether it hasn't been woven correctly or whether it hasn't been cut correctly. And then can make a better decision. So 40 and a half both sides, that's great. Do check the pattern of your fabric because if there is a direction, you wanna keep that in mind. It might help with the way it's going to look. Do bear in mind that if you have something that is stripy downwards, by the time you've made it, it's no longer gonna be that way because we're gonna make this linger on the bias. So the waistband comes here and this becomes straight down. 
rather than the fabric at the moment which is straight down this way. Don't forget to watch my previous video on how to measure yourself so you know how much fabric you're going to need. In my case I need the waistband to be 32 inches and to calculate my length I'm going to divide that by 4. So that gives me 8 inches and I want the length of my linga to be 40 so 40 plus 8 gives me 48. I will need a minimum of 48 inches uh, for this fabric. And what I've got here is 48 and a half. So I've barely made it. What you want to do is add on a couple of inches for seam allowance. And sometimes, you know, if you don't have enough, you can add bias binding to the bottom. Um, and I might do that in this case because I don't have a lot of fabric. Um, to turn inwards. So if I measure it like this, it does look like it's almost 49 inches, so I may be able to do this. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is keep that same length all the way around. So for example, if I had the complete length of material I needed, I would need eight inches for the waistband, 40 inches for the length, another couple of inches for the seam allowance so that would give me 50 and I would pin down at 50 all around my linga starting from top corner I've got 49 so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to put my measuring tape in the corner and I'm going to measure out 49 inches so I've got 49 inches here I'm going to use that I'm going to put my measuring tape in the corner I'm going to put another 49 inches and I'm going to pin this down do that all the way around your fabric from the same point down at 49 and then what we're going to do is use these pins to cut our linger shape and then going pins are a little bit hard to see on this fabric but here's the last one I feel like I need one in between those just so that I don't cut wonky. The more pins you have, the easier it is to uh, guide you through your cutting and you can see I'm coming to the edge of my fabric and this is where I mean we don't have the width in this fabric to be able to make the linger 49 inches all the way round so 49 inches here will be my last cut and if you can see these pins are creating a cone shape and we're missing this much fabric so what we call the quarter piece is the fabric which would make that into a complete cone on here. Okay. so we're going to add that fabric in and we're going to take it from this fabric here that we're going to cut away so let's cut away so we make the shape of our window using our pins to guide us. Here's my first pin. 
remove the mouse seat going on. And you can see how bad this fabric is when it comes to the threads that are coming out. So it's quite important that we overlock or put a zigzag or something to keep our seams intact. Otherwise, while you're making the outfit, you'll lose a lot of the length. Remember, as you're cutting, cut straight to the next pin. So you're aiming for the next pin and you're just cutting straight to it. Don't be tempted to cut a curve because when you come to hemming it, it makes it very difficult to get that even and you get this effect of um, the fabric going up and down. Okay, so this is our last little cut. Look at the missing part. What I want to do is put in a join, taking into account we want this to be 49 inches. When you do add in your quarter piece, do watch out for the direction of the pattern. And if you look at this pink pattern, you can see that the stalk is here and here we have flower. But here the stalk is upside down, so this doesn't quite match. Luckily the print is really loud and from afar you can't really tell the direction which is going to help me out here. Um, if you can, try and make your pattern match, it will make it look a lot nicer, but you may be able to get away with that going to be right near your ankle so usually it's not noticeable. If you're using the plain fabric you'll be fine. So just overlap it here because you know you're going to have some seam allowance. 49 inches and double it over and whatever your length is for your outfit where mine is 
49 in length. Okay, that's 50. Then I'm measuring out the length and we're going to pin our length in in close sections so that we can cut from one pin to another. As you can see, the lining is green and the base of the um, actual Linga fabric is blue. Uh, but because it's so dark I, and it is on the inside, I don't think it matters too much. It's really preference and I'd rather use up fabric that I have, like I say, than uh, buy fabric, especially. Pins. This one was just to keep it in place and all we're doing is aiming directly to the next pin. With all my scissors are getting a little bit blunt so I have to find someone to sharpen them for me. That's a good thing about the metal type of scissors, you can have them sharpened. The um, plastic scissors, usually like office type scissors, they're great, they're nice and sharp to begin with, but once they've got blunt, especially if you are using them for paper as well as fabric, once they're blunt, um, it's not great because you don't want them to ruin your fabric. I do definitely recommend a nice sharp pair of scissors. The width is 44 and a half. We want to make that 49. So overlap your fabric evenly, I'm just going to pin it to secure that so that it doesn't move while I'm cutting out the lens that we want to cut out. You remember the waistband that I needed is 32 inches wide. I'm going to divide that by four, giving me eight inches, and I'm going to measure eight inches along here and just pin this down. So I've measured out nine inches, and I'm just going to cut. 
as I did before using my pins as the guideline. Now sometimes if the measurement doesn't, if the calculation doesn't work for you, you can measure the correct um, amount here, so nine inches, nine inches, but you can always bring it into 10 so that you can make the waistband bigger because you don't want to shorten it from the length, so you wanna keep it nine here and the same on the width, but if you bring it into 10 here, you will always have enough fabric here because it'll drop and, or you can cut it more here as well. So that's the waistband done on the lining. Let's do the waistband on our linger. You can always put in more pins if you need more help to get the shape of this right. So let's put in another pin here. Before you cut, always measure what this is going to give you. So that looks good. Follow your pins. sewn down your edge I've just kind of given it a zigzag which will act like an overlocking and keep all our threads intact once you've done that go back to the side that was short and add in the quarter piece so here is what we cut earlier and as you can see I've done the zigzag on there so that again the threads are intact and th this is going to join on to our linger so the two parts to it need to be joined here and once they're joined together they can be added to the main linger we're going to do that not only to our fabric, but we're also doing that to our lining. So if I show you my lining, here it is the linger and this is the part which was short. So again, we've got the same shape quarter piece that needs to be firstly joined together. And then once these are together, they need to be added on to the main part of the lining. And we have the correct length on both sides. So add on the quarter pieces and then we can join the lining and the linger at the waistband. So I'm taking the two sides of my quarter piece and I'm joining them together. take the quarter piece and join it to my linger and the way I'm going to do it is work out the middle 
and then put the middle of the fabric along with the middle of the uh, quarter piece just so that everything's evened out. onto your linga and you want to do the same for your actual fabric. So I've got the two pieces that I've cut for the quarter piece and I'm joining them together. We're adding the quarter piece now to our linga and we're going to start with joining the two pieces together. sides together. Make sure you've got it in the centre. And that is even. And then just begin to sew. When you're changing the thickness of your fabric like this between your actual linga fabric, which is thick in this case, and the very thin material that I'm using for the lining, be very sure that you're adjusting your tension on your stitch, otherwise you'll get a very weak seam. I'm happy with the quarter piece on my lining and on my actual linga. So what I've done is I've put them both the right way with the wrong sides showing on the outsides. Keep that all nice and flat. And we're going to sew together the waistband so that the right sides are facing. And once the lining is at, attached to the waistband, we can continue to put in the zip. Here's my linga fabric facing upwards, the right sides facing together. And I'm just going to sew the lining to the linga. Be careful not to pull this fabric now. With a really steady hand. Keep the seam as even as you can. I'm just using my foot along the edge as a guide. can do next is put on a 
stitch here, it's called the under stitch, to keep the lining on the inside of our outfit so that when we're wearing it, it doesn't come to the top. So I'm not pulling, I'm just keeping the fabric apart. Just make sure that nothing is in my way and I'm getting a nice even seam. Okay, so we've had our fabric all lined. Can iron this down at this point and uh, so that you can see what we've got here. And really what we want to do next is add on the zip. And we're going to do that by measuring out where we want our zip. It's going to be facing the right way. So let's sew the zip down. I'm going to swap out my normal foot for a zip foot, which looks like this. I can sew on either side of this. And I'm just gonna clip this on. I've got to sew my zip at three and a half centimeters. down where I want my zip to start and measure that again just to make sure I've got it correct yeah that's three and what I'm going to do is as I'm sewing I'm going to roll out the zip as you can to the zip here. Keep that nice and straight so that the fabric hasn't got any twists or anything underneath. Keep rolling the zip out. to sew the zip down for about seven inches so we have enough for the zip to go over our hips. So let's just measure out how much we've done. It's almost seven. So I'm just going to end it here. Ironed it out, it's a good idea just to uh, trim off any excess lining because it's really not nice when you can see the lining from underneath your outfit when you're wearing it when you're walking along. So, the more you can do at this point where your fabric is still flat it'll just be easier for you than when your linga starts to take shape and now that you know that these are more or less level and you're going to turn in more of the lining than you are the um, actual fabric of your linga you know that the lining isn't going to show also now that we've Behind the waistband you can see how this is sitting quite nicely and 
you know there's no chance of the lining popping up quite happy with the way this side of our zip has come out and what we want to do is sew down the other side of our zip and you want to make sure that when you sew the other side of the zip the top of the linger meet at the same point so when you're placing the start of your zip near the top of the waistband make sure that it's going to bring them both in line exactly. I always find it a little harder to sew when all of your fabric needs to be on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is put in a stitch from the wrong way of the zip um, from this direction so that all my fabric is still on my left side and then I can put in a closer seam once I know that I've got it in the right place. Bring together the two sides of your linga so that they're even at the top. Measure out where your zip needs to be so that it's the right fitting. Mine needs to be here. And then also measure out that it's the same distance away from the top. So I've got like two millimeters there. When that's sewn together, the top of that linger should be in line. Take that over to your sewing machine and put in the seam. Put your needle where you want to start and like before, just keep rolling out this zip so that you get as close as possible to your seam. I just pinned this in place, just remove that. Okay, so we have here, the zip is sewn down now on the other side. So the best thing to do is turn this out the right way. And then close the zip and see how it looks. So that's actually quite a nice finish. And let's see if the waistband is level so I'm happy that that meets at the right place that's looking quite good so what we need to do to finish this now is just complete the side seam so I'm going to turn it the wrong way around for a moment this is a seam for our zip what we have here is our zip done up and the lining I've just put to one side for a moment because I want to show you the two edges of your actual linger. Now what I really want to do is sew the fabric of the linger separately to the lining fabric. So the way we want to do that is make sure none of the lining is going to get caught in the seam put in the seam as close as possible as you can to this part of the zip. I'm using my zip foot so I can get really close and I really want to sew just as that zip seam finishes. Let's put it in the right place and just let it fall like it did then so that none of the zip is actually caught in the way. And put in from here all the way down to the bottom of your fabric now we're quite away from the edge of the fabric there so I'm going to try and do a nice slanty seam bringing in the flare as much as I can so making sure it's smooth. OK, 
Okay, so now when we turn this out the right way, actually while we're here, no, let's turn this out the right way and see how this seam came out. So here we have our zip and we've already seen that that's looking quite good and then we have our side seam that we've just put in. So that all looks quite neat and the zip is looking quite invisible, so that's nice and if we just check the seam all the way down. It does need ironing out but that looks fine to me. So what that leaves is the lining is actually open so what we want to do is just close our lining just as we did our Lenga fabric and we'll just do that by holding both sides to where they meet and put in a seam on the side. Our lining on one side which now has seam and we have our lingo on the other side and what we want to do is just turn over the right side of our lingo and hold it out from the waist just bring that straight and level okay and we can see that our seam is looking quite nice here. I think it's looking fine. And if we turn it the other way around, we want to see the same amount of neatness. This is where our zip is, and then our fabric covers it quite nicely with the seam on the wrong side. So again, it doesn't interfere with us. All the fabric is um, covered on the side, which would be nice and comfortable. It's just this part that isn't covered. Now, the fabric that I'm using has got a metallic thread running through it. So this is a little sharp, and I may have to turn this in so that that is comfortable when I, when, you know, oh, it's not for me, but when it's been worn, um, that's comfortable. And just to show you the other side where we had our quarter pieces, the quarter piece is looking all nice and neat and the seams for that again is on the inside. So quite pleased with the way that has turned out. And so all we need to do is try this on correct the length, make sure it's how we want it, and then we can hem it. And because there is such a thickness to the brocade, I really recommend sewing on by binding and hemming it on the inside, which I think would look nice if we done it by hand. With regards to the lining, we could easily just, just uh, hem it on the sewing machine 